Hey, Jacksonville, now is the time to build your child's future. That's why Duval County Public Schools is gearing up for the 2016 School Choice Expo on Saturday, January 9th from 11 to 3 at the Prime Osborne Convention Center. Learn about all the academic opportunities available in every single Duval County elementary, middle, and high school. That includes magnet programs, career academies, and high school acceleration programs. This event is absolutely free and open to the public. For more information, visit DuvalSchools.org and we'll, we'll see, see you there. there. From the wrestling ring to the gymnasium, hundreds of Duval County Public School students are taking a stand against bullying, thanks to some help from big names from the small screen. Welcome to a new episode of Real School. I'm Madeline Bryant. Real School reporter Charlotte Rogers is here now with today's top story. Madeline, looks like a little star power went a long way with these students. These guests took a break from the bright lights and TV sets to talk with students face to face about an important topic. Between the packed bleachers, news crews, and photographers, this school was ready for one grand entrance after another. I watched Total Divas. I really liked it when they came out. It was really interesting because I've never been like in this situation before. It was really cool because you got to see them in first person. It's not too often Duval School students get to meet celebrities in real life, but it was a real world issue that brought this group of world wrestling entertainment superstars and divas to Mayport Coastal Sciences Middle School. Bullying. It made it feel more personal because then you feel like everybody has a connection with bullying. It's not just students or like children, it's more than that. One by one, they shared their stories. We have all been bullied and you guys aren't alone. And they gave advice. That's why we're here to give you extra tools to help protect yourself and your friends. All with the hopes of using their celebrity status to show students that they aren't alone and that they too can make a difference. And all of us at one point in our life were bullied and we've become successful. There's ways around it. You can tell teachers, you can tell parents, don't be a bystander. And we're just here to spread that message to all the kids. And if they see us acting appropriately, hopefully they'll do it in turn. They're here as part of the WWE's BA Star program. It encourages students to log on to their website and pledge to show tolerance and respect. Two qualities these guests say are important not only in person, but also online. There's so many negative comments because it's so easy to post them online that you have to deal with it every day. So whether you're muting people, blocking people, just staying away from negativity, it's the most important thing to do. Think positive, have fun, know who your friends are. Because you never know if you're gonna be in that situation one day or if one of your best friends is and you wanna take the pledge. Guests even spoke about laws in place to protect students from bullying, but they didn't leave without doing something special. Eighth grader Marquise Waller. <laughs> Three students, a sixth, seventh, and eighth grader, as well as Principal Katrina McRae, got these neat certificates from the BA Star program. How cool is that? I know these students won't forget this experience anytime soon. But more importantly, we know they won't forget these important lessons. My advice is to help them out. If the bully keeps fighting or something like that, I'll go tell them to do it. That is good advice. By the way, these superstars and divas also visited Ocean Way Middle School. Our district has plenty of anti-bullying resources. To check them out, visit DuvalSchools.org. For Real School, I'm Charlotte Rogers. Back to you. Our next story proves that role models don't have to be celebrities you see on TV. They can also be high school students who love to read. Real School anchor George Boston joins us with more on a mentorship program making a huge difference in our students. George? 
Madeline, like reading an open book, it's easy to see that students are being impacted by the Teen Trendsetters program. It's true transformation taking place one book at a time. Maybe reptiles. These aren't just the sounds of students reading. There you go. They're the sounds of learning and forging relationships. How about we finish this? Inside this second grade classroom at Parkwood Heights Elementary School, you can find two groups of students. One is determined to improve their reading skill. The other is determined to see them succeed. I love it. I love coming in and seeing the little kids face and it's just like they light up and I'm just like it's so adorable, <laughs> so cute and I love helping them and helping them read and progress and I love it. They're all here for the Teen Trendsetters program which is part of the Barbara Bush Foundation for Family Literacy. Students from Terry Parker High School serve as mentors to these second grade students once a week for 45 minutes. Mary Nauman, a site coordinator for Communities and Schools Jacksonville, is Terry Parker's teacher advisor. This may be the only time that they get an, a young adult with them reading. Um, a lot of them don't have parents at home that spend that time with them. So this is that opportunity to get that new best friend. Nauman says mentors and mentees will spend the entire school year working through a set curriculum provided by the Barbara Bush Foundation. That consists of students reading books and completing workbooks and worksheets. For teen mentors like Deshauna Johnson, this program provides a much needed confidence booster, especially for readers with learning disabilities. When I was going to school, I never had this program and I really needed it because I struggled with my disability, my learning disability. I felt like if I joined this program, it would, you know, give me the courage to teach other kids to read and build my self-confidence up. First-time mentor Jade Scruggs says this experience means helping others reach their potential. No more vocabulary, no more about their culture, no more around them. Reading helps open new doors. It helps you, it just, it helps you have active imagination. But before you think the second graders are the only ones being impacted by this program, think again. They actually are excited about coming over. At first when I was trying to recruit kids about it, it was like, oh, well, if I have to, I guess I need the community service hours. But now they're excited about coming over. And in between from Tuesday to Tuesday, they're talking about the little kids. These mentors and mentees do more than just read together. They have fun. In fact, Terry Parker students hosted a Christmas lunch for their mentees with food prepared by their culinary program. For Real School, I'm George Boston. They're learning with a touch, a turn, and a tap. Duval County students are stepping up their STEM skills through a unique hands-on exhibit. Check it out. This is a traveling, interactive experience set up inside of Twin Lakes Middle School. It's the MALU Science Exhibit. MALU stands for Mobile Oil Field Learning Unit. The goal is to give students a glimpse of how STEM is applied in the oil and gas industry. Through six different kiosks and 24 activities, students tried their hand at everything from operating robot arms to taking a closer look at core samples. Looks pretty fun. Dozens of students at both Twin Lakes Middle School and Elementary Schools enjoyed the exhibit over a two-day period. An exciting new program is getting off the ground at Rebalt High School, allowing students to aim for the sky right in the classroom. Real School anchor Desiree Miller is here to explain how a new partnership is putting this program in top flight. Madeline, how many of us can say by the time we graduate high school, we will have logged over 40 actual flight hours? Well, guess what? Students who complete this program will be able to. Welcome to the Aviation Academy at Rebalt High School. Take a seat at one of these computers. In no time, you're up, up, and away. Students are testing their skills through these computer-based simulators, but soon they'll have access to even more exciting resources. We learned the details during a recent news conference at the school. Dr. Vitti announced that a two-year, $300,000 grant from J.P. Morgan Chase is funding a major program expansion. Students will have the opportunity to go through flight simulation training, private pilot ground school, participate in off-site learning opportunities, and more. Students will also be able to earn multiple industry certifications, as well as log hours that can be used towards earning a private pilot license. Aviation has been identified as a top five merging industry in Northeast Florida. Lead instructor CJ Charlton says this academy will not only help fill jobs, but also increase minority representation. Standing here, I represent 
one of less than 3,000 African-American pilots out of the total over 85,000 commercial airline pilots in the United States. We've now reached the precipice where we don't have enough pilots. We just do not have enough pilots. And there are, they are desperately seeking ways to create opportunities. Students who successfully complete all parts of this program will have streamlined admission into Jacksonville University's aeronautics programs. Now that is great news. And, and I look forward to being able to walk on that plane and a, and a Reebok graduate say, hey, Dr. Vitti, I remember when we, taught, we initiated this program and I just want you to know that I was part of that aviation program. I'll get on that plane not only with a sense of pride but a little bit more comfort um, in knowing that someone that went through our program is flying the plane. Now on to more aviation news. Watch the students at First Coast High School step out of the classroom and into an aircraft hangar. The location? Flight Star Aircraft Services, an aircraft repair facility near Cecil Airfield. Students with the school's PRIDE program begin their journey in this classroom, learning about differing job opportunities and career paths in this aviation industry. That included learning about trades as well as mentorship programs within the company. The group then took a tour of the property, and I gotta say, that looks super cool. The first stop involved students boarding a plane and taking turns sitting in the cockpit. They also toured warehouses, observed aircraft mechanics in action, and visited hangars. Hmm, they should invite me next time. By the way, this is a high paying field. The average salary of an airline pilot is more than $130,000 and the average salary of an air traffic controller is over $85,000. For Real School, I'm Desiree Miller. Back to you. The time to build your future is now and the place to get started is the district's annual School Choice Expo. This year's event takes place on Saturday, January 9th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Prime Osborne Convention Center. Parking and admission are free. This year's theme is entitled Build Your Future. You can count on each one of the district's 160 plus schools to be in attendance, ready to inform you about the many programs and offerings available to our students. Student performers and educational vendors will also be there. To learn more, visit www.dewellschools.org and click on the banner on the front page. Coming up on Real School, a little food for the brain and something yummy for the tummy. We're hitting the road with the Brain Food Food Truck and learning why eating healthy can be fun and filling. Taste and see after the break. Plus, this story comes wrapped up in a bow and covered with smiles. You are invited to a special party with hundreds of Duval students as the guest of honor. We'll reveal who hosted the gathering in minutes. Don't change the channel. Real School will be right back. Hey Jacksonville, now is the time to build your child's future. That's why Duval County Public Schools is gearing up for the 2016 School Choice Expo on Saturday, January 9th from 11 to 3 at the Prime Osborne Convention Center. Learn about all the academic opportunities available in every single Duval County elementary, middle, and high school. That includes magnet programs, career academies, and high school acceleration programs. This event is absolutely free and open to the public. For more information, visit DuvalSchools.org and we'll, we'll see, see you there. there. Throughout our lifetime, we make important decisions and choosing the right school for your child's education should be one of them. From neighborhood elementary schools to magnet middle schools and nationally ranked high schools, we educate all children. That's our commitment to you and your family. We are the students, we are the teachers, we are the community. We are public education strong. Duval County Public Schools, every school, every classroom, every student, every day. Welcome back to Real School. Duval students are taking a bite out of bad eating habits thanks to a fun and tasty alternative. Feast your eyes on this, yum! Real School cameras were rolling as students at Highlands Middle School welcomed the Brain Food Truck to their campus. The food truck, which is operated by Chartwells and Thompson Hospitality, is one of two that visits our schools. Professional chefs work with dietitians to create nutritious meals, which clearly have these students eating up. Highlands students had the choice of purchasing tangy Asian wraps, bacon jalapeno grilled cheese sandwiches, and chili over chips. Uh, the food trucks were just another tool for us to use to get to those students that don't normally come to us. Uh, we wanted to show them that yes, school food has changed. School food is different and it's really delicious and you should try it. When we were creating these food truck menus, we really wanted to showcase that you can eat healthy, but you can have something really delicious too. 
Chartwells operates a second truck called Sono that serves food with more of a Latin flair. By the way, all of the meals served from both trucks must meet the same federal regulations required of all school lunches. It's a story you can really sink your teeth into. Thousands of students in dozens of schools were receiving free and preventative dental care. Real School reporter Alex Sobel is here with more. Madeline, what makes this story even more impressive is that students aren't even coming to the dentist. The dentist is coming to them. It's no wonder they're smiling from ear to ear. It looks like a dentist office, and it sounds like a dentist office. Let's take a look. But factor in the wheels, rear view mirrors, and engine, and this dentist office becomes the Happy Tooth Express. It's one of two mobile dental units of the Florida Department of Health in Duval County. Oral health is important because it affects the general health. So we'd like to just make sure that all children have access, in the Duval County area, have access to good dental care. On this day, the Happy Tooth Express is parked at Fishweir Elementary School. One by one, students are being called in to open up, allowing dentists to really sink their teeth into a good exam. When I go to the dentist, they like clean my teeth. Fifth grader James Miller says he likes visiting the mobile clinic. Like many of his peers, the visit equates to a yearly exam. The Department of Health pulls data from the state in order to target Title I schools, as well as schools where more than half of their students are on free and reduced lunch. The goal is to reach students who don't have a regular dental home. Okay. Okay. Uh... These dentists are doing much more than just cleaning teeth. They're looking at each student with a fine tooth comb. Some students might get sealants, Sealants are plastic coatings that are painted on the chewing surfaces of teeth. Usually children age 6 to about 14 to keep um, out the plaque and decay and to keep them from getting cavities. Some might receive fluoride treatments and others will receive instructions for home. It's not just clean teeth that they're after, they're also after a mindset. It's important to start young children off with a dental home so that they will get used to going to the dentist getting treatments done, and not be afraid. There are a lot of phobias associated with going to the dentist, and we'd like to dispel some of those in young children early, as early as possible. Each student leaves the van with a free toothbrush, sticker, and a note for their parents. At the end of the day, students not only have a little more sparkle to their smile, they also have a lot of gratitude in their hearts. It's just really generous that they just come here and come to every single school. It's just really nice. In case you were wondering, the second dental van is called the Smile Express. Pretty good name, don't you think? Last year, both vans visited 74 Title I schools. Great work. For Real School, I'm Alex Sobel. For most teenagers, turning 16 means getting a driver's license. But did you know that in the state of Florida, 16-year-olds can also register to vote? The district recently partnered with Duval County's Supervisor of Elections Office in hosting voter registration drives at each of our high schools. Staff from the Supervisor of Elections Office set up tables during lunch, giving students the chance to become registered voters upon request. This is video at Inglewood High School's registration drive. Even though the students can't vote until they're 18, the law allows them to begin registering at 16. To learn more, you can always visit the Supervisor of Elections Office at www.duvalelections.com. We've got a few good reasons why you should watch this next story, about a billion to be exact. Find out why balancing the district's budget may not be as easy as you think. Real School reporter Joel Oliver joins us with the interview. Plus, these Duval County students have home court advantage on a fun opportunity. We've got front row seats to the basketball event of the season. Keep it here, Real School will be right back. Hey Jacksonville, now is the time to build your child's future. That's why Duval County Public Schools is gearing up for the 2016 School Choice Expo on Saturday, January 9th from 11 to 3 at the Prime Osborne Convention Center. Learn about all the academic opportunities available in every single Duval County elementary, middle, and high school. That includes magnet programs, career academies, and high school acceleration programs. This event is absolutely free and open to the public. For more information, visit DuvalSchools.org and we'll, we'll see, see you there. there. They shoot and they score. A good time, that is. We're talking about hundreds of Duval County Public School students enjoying a basketball game at the University of North Florida. 
You could really feel the excitement inside the University of North Florida's arena. The women's basketball team took on Weber International before a crowd of ecstatic elementary school students. Did we mention they were excited? Real school cameras spotted kids from a number of Duval schools taking in the sights and the sounds of the game. But students enjoyed much more than a sporting event. At halftime, coaches encouraged students to work hard in school and listen to their teachers. We even caught a few students brushing up on their swoop math skills. Nice. And, of course, we can't forget UNF's lovable mascot, Ozzy the Osprey. Ozzy helped us out by taking this super fun video of the crowd on his Ozzy cam. Hmm, I wonder if you can spot yourself in this crowd. The game was close, with Weber International taking the win. But, win or lose, students no doubt left full of excitement. Balancing a budget can be challenging, but imagine balancing the billion dollar budget of a large urban school district. To learn more, we turn to the head of finance. Real School anchor Joel Oliver is here with more. Madeline, I'm joined by Latrell Edwards, Chief Financial Officer for Duval County Public Schools. Thank you for joining us today. Nice to be here. First question, is it common for school districts to have a Chief Financial Officer, and why does ours need one? Yes, it is very common for a school district to have a chief financial officer because that officer has to manage and direct all of the financial services for the school district. Okay. Talk to us about some of the departments you oversee and why are they important? So there are four major departments within my division. So we have budget services, we have internal auditing, business services, and federal programs. And each one of those departments kind of function together from start to finish to handle the budget, the revenue, and the expenditures for the district. Interesting. Our district has a billion dollar budget, which sounds like a lot of money. Where does that money come from? So a billion dollars is a lot of money. Um, that money actually comes mostly from the state. Um, we participate in a financial educational program that the state then sponsors us for all of the students that we serve. So our business is really about students. Um, and the money comes in the form of what we call FTE, so our full-time equivalent, and we receive funds for all students who are students in Duval County. Are district leaders able to spend that billion dollars as they wish? They would like to, um, and I think that's probably one of the challenging pieces of my job because we have so many different funding sources and there are restrictions on certain funds that it becomes my responsibility to make sure that the district is in compliance with the funding streams and with the expenditures that they use it on. What's something about the district's finances you wish our viewers knew? I think it's important that all of the viewers know that all of the funds that come into the school districts are ultimately used for students. So from your instructional staff to the chairs that you sit in, from the transportation to the meals that you have, it goes from start to finish to serve the students of Duval County Public Schools. All right. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. You can always learn more about the district's finances by visiting our website. For Real School, I'm Joel Oliver. Back to you. For the students in our next story, 2015 ended with a sweet surprise. It's all thanks to the dedication of dozens of officers and volunteers. Real School reporter Molly Kirkwood is here with more on this special annual tradition. With great food, great company, and presents, you just can't go wrong with this story. So sit back, watch the video, and I guarantee you have a big smile on your face. Who doesn't love a good party? By the looks on these students' faces, I think it's obvious they're having a blast. But you see, these students are more than just guests at this party. They're the life of the party. That's because this celebration is in their honor. And they're just so excited and they're so innocent. There's no strings attached. They come through the door and they love the police. This is the annual fraternal order of police Christmas party at the Jacksonville Fairgrounds. For well over 60 years, Volunteers have been hosting this gathering for special needs students attending Duval County Public Schools. And all these students have to do is show up. Uniformed officers, volunteers, and district staff were on hand, serving tasty holiday meals. I like how the food tastes like. Green beans, turkey, and, and a slice of bread. And of course, providing the fun. Well, it's really good and great. My best part is seeing everybody smiling and having fun. The guys love them at the end of the day. They know that they get to spoil them and they'll be with them for lunch and they'll take care of them while they open up their presents and they'll do all that. And at the end of the day, they put them on the bus and they go back to their schools. But I think the kids leave a mark on the officers and hopefully the officers leave a mark on the kids. 
As if feasting with friends weren't enough, students received a big surprise from a famed visitor. Santa Claus! None other than Mr. Santa Claus himself. Pretty great entrance, don't you think? In no time, students were gathered at the Christmas tree. One by one, the big guy visited with students and surprised each one with a special gift, chosen just for them. What we do is we get a recommendation from the individual teacher, the classroom teacher that has that particular student. They'll make a recommendation based upon conversations that they have with the kids early in the year. And then we do our, we do our best to try and find something, whatever they ask for. I think it's safe to say not one student was disappointed. It's clear this party was about much more than a meal or a present. It was about making sure these students feel special all year round. A lot of times these guys are kind of overlooked, and so we want them to feel special too. Thank you very much. You really did great for keeping our environment safe, and I hope I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Can you believe this party has been going on since 1948? Talk about a timeless tradition. Great work, guys. For Real School, I'm Molly Kirkwood. That's it for this episode of Real School. We'll be back with a new episode February 7th at 6 p.m. right here on The CW. In the meantime, you can always keep up with us at DuvalSchools.org. Till then, thanks for watching and have a great day. Three, two. Madeline. I love you. That's one of the words. <laughs> uh, this is instructions for help. That's, that's, that's a funny part, by the way. That's a mouthful. Get it? It is a mouthful. Uh, and presents. I. Okay. So, like, the day I got my braces off, we were there, got me like a pound. I ate it all. It was. I talk with my hands all the time, so I didn't want to, like. Madeline, I'm joined by Latrell Edwards Financial Department Division. Because we have bloopers. <laughs>